Oh, knock knock. Who's there? Nothing's gonna. Nothing's gonna. Who? Nothing's gonna change my love for you. Not, you not. ought to know by now how much I love you. Pikit pikit pa talaga. <laughs> naman dyan. Ang sweet mo naman. Oh, ako naman. Meron din ako. Ay, oh. uh, ano talaga? Knock, knock. <laughs> Nothing's gone. I mean, who's there? Something's gone. Oh, Something's gonna change. Oh, it's my love for you. Pengi pera. Mas, mas, <laughs> joke lang. Joke na. lang. Mas malaki. Sige, gito mo. 14th man. 14th man? Mm-hmm. Pwede. Yes, pwede hanggang... 15th month alamas pa. 20th month, 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 month <laughs> pwede. Para may pabili din ako ng regalo sa'yo. Ta- itanong ko sa'yo, Ardy. Anong pumasok sa isip mo mm-hmm. nung brief time na mm-hmm. ang event natin ngayon is about new changes and direction? And what first came to my mind immediately was what Peter Drucker said. At sino naman si Peter Drucker? Si Peter? Yung mga si Mang Peter? Ne, si Mang Peter? Si Mang Peter? Yun ang titignatang sa kanto? Hindi. Hindi siya. Si Mang Peter. Sorry. Okay, go. Si Peter Drucker. They call him the man who invented management. He's an author, thought leader. He passed away but his teachings are still alive. So, right now. Sabihin ko, sorry, si Manong Peter, kaya alam, namatay na pala siya. Okay, go. No, he's mentored thousands of CEOs All right. and students as a professor of management. Here are some of the books on change and the future mm-hmm. that he wrote and some familiar quotes baka that we can use. Parang, okay? parang importanting tao siya. Sige oh, na, tingnan natin ito, yung mga libro yeah, niya. Ito. Meron siya, Managing in Turbulent Times. In this book, he said, change is the norm. Unless an organization sees that its task is to lead change, that organization will not survive. Ay, oo oh, oh, nga. Mm. Kasi syempre, we need to keep up, of diba? Of course, of course. Mm. Ito, meron pang isa. Oh. Managing in a time of great change. Oh. Okay? Sabi niya, one cannot manage change. One can only be ahead of it. So, kailangan forward thinking tayo. Oo, oh, oo. Oh, oh, oh. Kasi, yung bukas, maghihinga yun. Tama. Mm. Oh. So, meron pang isa. Okay. Marami siya sa libro, pero one more. Oh. In managing for the future. Ano sabi niya? The best way to predict the future is to create it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's wonderful. Anyway, this is the quote that I remembered from okay, Sabini okay. Peter Drucker. Ito. In a few hundred years, when the history of our time will be written from a long-term perspective, I think it is very probable that the most important event these historians will see is not technology, it's not the internet, it's not e-commerce. What is it? It is an unprecedented change in the human condition. An unprecedented mm-hmm. change mm-hmm. in the human condition. Ask me what that change is. Anong change yun? Ito yun. Nagulat ka. Sabi niya, for the first time, substantial and rapidly growing numbers of people have choices. 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 Oo nga, ang daming choices. Ang daming, di ba? Oo. So, oh. yun nga. So, and, and for the first time, people will have to manage themselves. So choices, choices whether to eat healthy or to eat junk food. And in, to in wake careers, up in, their, oh. uh, in their lives, life choices, and daming choices. To follow hmm. or not to follow. Hmm. Oh. And unfortunately, Sammy Peter Drucker, he ends it with this. We are totally unprepared for it. We are oh, totally no. unprepared for leading ourselves and making those choices. Oh no! Pa, tingin nga ulit yung quote niya, yung hmm. sinabi niya. Ito. Oh, ito. Well, gusto nila screenshot to. Okay, Mandana. okay. In a few hundred years, mm. when the history of our time will be written from a long-term perspective, I think that the most important event these historians will see is not technology, it's not the internet, it's not e-commerce, mm-hmm. it's an unprecedented change mm-hmm. in the human condition mm-hmm. for the first time. Rapidly growing numbers of people have choices. Mm-hmm. For the first time, they will have to manage themselves. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, we are totally unprepared for it. Yes. Naisip niya yon decades ago, mm-hmm. bago pa siya mamatay. Yeah. Parang, 1990s pa, sinasabi niya na yon. Wow. Bago pa lang internet nun. Nako. Yeah. So, 
it's really good, diba, that mm. in this season of our life, diba, mm. in this time in history, we have so many choices. Yeah, that's good news. It's good news. Oh, it's a good problem. Oh, it's, it's a, a good, good problem. problem. So it's good mm. news that we have so many choices that we can actually personalize our future. You know, sabi ni Peter Drucker, yes. that can, to predict the future, we should create it. But the downside is, or the bad news, is that many of us are unprepared on how to manage or decide which choices and changes to embrace and accept. So parang, pero eto ang problema, ang hirap to make choices. Yeah. When we're faced with a decision that will lead to change, mm -hmm. diba parang ang dali na, ay wag na lang kasi comfort zone ko to mm -hmm. eh, diba? Yeah. Kahit na positive yung change, many of us are paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Kasi, sanay tayo eh, dun mm -hmm. sa comfort zone natin. Nagde-default right. na lang tuloy tayo sa dati, ayaw na natin gumalaw. Yeah. Ang problema, mm -hmm. mapag-iiwanan tayo, mm -hmm. diba? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but talking about change and decisions, oh. our our family, we recently went through some big changes yes. brought about by some decisions, diba? Gaya ng paglipan natin dito sa Boracay, yes. last February, almost uh, exactly 10 months ago. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, diba? Ano February 10. And so, when I told you, anong, how did you process that? <laughs> one, alala, one night I went to you and I said, babe, what do you think if we move to Barakay? Sabi ko, let's go! <laughs> diba? Wala. So, ano mindset mo? How did, you, how did you process that? Diba? Without a bat of an eyelash. <laughs> Hindi, kasi ganito yun. Oh. Diba? Nung buong pandemic, mula nung nagsimula itong mga lockdown na to, hmm. parang, nung simula, parang feeling ko, ano lang siya eh, panaginip lang siya, na nasa twilight zone tayo. Oh. After a while, nung lumipas na yung isang, dalo, isang, dao, isang taon, dalawang taon, hmm. parang naiinip na ako, walang mapuntahan. Uh, yung mga anak natin, lagi na lang nasa bahay, hindi natin madala out of town. Hmm. Yung teenager namin, nagkakaroon na ng social anxiety. Yeah. Bilang isang magulang, parang nakakalungkot makita yun eh, hmm. sa mga anak natin eh. Tapos tayo din, para hmm. nagiging anxious tayo. Ako mismo, ayoko na magpunta sa mga ospital. Hmm. Di ba? Kasi baka mamaya, meron akong makasabay sa elevator na may COVID. Nakakatakot. Yeah. Kung gusto nyo magpunta sa ospital, hmm. nakatakot kayo magpa-check up. Kasi baka mamaya, <laughs> diba kung ano pa yung yung virus o bacteria na maipasalubong nyo sa mga anak nyo pag uwi nyo. Mm -hmm. Eh during that time, buntis ako. Yes, I remember. Of diba, course. I had a pandemic baby and then I had a baby. So my um mm -hmm. I, I was susceptible, my baby was susceptible to any disease. Mm -hmm. So uh, my mindset was, kung meron man tayong sakripisyo na kailangan gawin in order to relocate, to a vet to a, a place mm -hmm. that will allow us more freedom mm -hmm. that can move about with less fear mm -hmm. that we can experience more of nature then let's go for it mm -hmm. kaya yun sinabi ko nung tinanong niya sa akin kung pupunta tayo ng Boracay sabi ko let's go diba i mean may mga hesitation kasi may mga preparation na kailangan pero if i look forward to the future that is ahead of me para it leaves me even more excited mm -hmm. di ba mm -hmm. so, so what was your mindset na yung parang basta I've had enough of status quo <laughs> and i know mm -hmm. what my kids need mm -hmm. therefore let's go ganun yeah. let's go and change for me the go mindset means it's a good opportunity. It's a great opportunity. So let's go. Yeah. And it was open. It was a door that was that God opened Himself. Kasi pinat pray mo, di ba? Oh, that was oh. parang kinausap ka ni God na you don't have to stay in the city, oh, di ba? Oh, yeah. so, Ako yeah. pa kung isang go. Ano yon? Galing o, oh. oh, di ba? Go, go, make that change. <laughs> so Go nang go. Kasi yeah, yeah, yeah. in times of uncertainty, we don't know for how long the pandemic would end. Mm. And it will certainly affect the mental, physical, spiritual health of our children. Then let's go and change. Yes, diba? I know, I know. Embrace change. But you know, remember, it wasn't very easy to make the change because it wasn't accepted by everyone in the family. Even one grieved the decision. Ay, yeah. totoo yan. Yung eldest namin, mm. syempre, teenager na siya, mas gusto niya yung mga friends niya. Mm. So, hirap talaga siya. But you can't please everybody. Mm. But as the leader of the mm. family, and that is you, yeah. you really have to make the decision for the majority. Mm. Eh, syempre, ako naman, being your wife, I have to support and submit mm. to your decision. Actually, yeah. ako, yun, ako din yung <laughs> sumakay sa decision mo. It reminds me, Miriam, some real-life examples of how accepting a little change in our routine or habits can be life-changing, actually. Totoo yan. Mm. So, I can think of a few things in my life where small changes have big effects. Mm. Para, 
kunyari, yung sa... Um, o oh, sige, okay. ikaw muna. <laughs> Ganun na. Mamaya na, mag-iisip ako. Ikaw, oh, okay. mag-share ka ng isang example. Na- naalala ko, nabanggit mo sa akin yung tungkol kay Ignas Semel White. Ikwento mo nga sa kanila. Oh, oh, go, go. O oh, nga, yeah. Actually, in my in my booklet, yung Buhay na Hindi Bitin, it's a small booklet. I shared the story of how ito, changes, simple change in the routine of doctors delivering babies save lives. And it's very interesting how something as routinary today as hand washing was so controversial and hard to implement before. Tinan mo itong article na ito sa... Oh, ito ang tinan mo article sa National, Ge- National Geographic. Oh. Wash your hands was once controversial medical advice. What? Tinan mo yan? Controversial sa matalang ngayon? Parang over the pandemic, oh, I've it, never it, washed it, my hands. It all, started, it all started with this one man who was concerned about how mothers in Austria were dying in the OB ward at their hospital after doctors delivered their babies. Oh, oh, oh. oh so ito si, ito, itong pangan niya, si Ignaz Semmelweis, and he was an OB practicing in, in Austria. Austria. Okay. okay? So ito yung problem. In 1847, the Vienna General Hospital OB ward, uh, Dr. Swing, ah, the Dr. Swing, had a high 10% mortality rate of birthing mothers. Oh, no. Yes. So bira mo, Out of every thousand moms who come to the hospital, 100 will die. Pero ito, ito. Oh. Sa midwife's wing, oh. the rate was only 1%. What? Bakit ganun? Bakit mas marami pag doktor mismo ang nag-anok oh, sa'yo? Eh, yung midwife. So, nagtaka si Dr. Oh, yun, Semmelweis. And he, this is what he... Discovered. Dis- or ito yung observation niya. Ito yung theory niya. Sabi niya, oh, ito, ito pa, uh, we'll mention na, kumalat sa Austria. So, mga uh, mga nanay or would-be nanays, natatakot silang pumunta sa hospital. hospital. They would rather give birth in the street than go to the hospital. Biro mo? Oo, kasi pupunta ka ng hospital sa mga mamatay ka pa, di ba? Be- so, ang sabi ni, ano, ni Semmelweis, he believed na yung mga doktor who were handing the cadavers na ino-autopsy niya, na infect yung women. Kasi hindi sila naguhugas hindi ng kamay. Hindi naguhugas ng kamay. Ay, nako na. Biro mo? So sabi niya, he instituted a small change. Sabi niya, mga doc, maghugas muna kayo ng kamay ninyo bago mag-deliver kayo ng baby. Na? <laughs> Naman, ano? <laughs> Yun lang yung change na sinabi niya. Oh. Pero, eto, bira mo, how did they respond? Oh. The doctors were appalled oh. and annoyed and they complained. Huh? Sabi nila, washing hands before treating a pregnant woman was too much work. Ano ba yan? <laughs> Makakatamad daw, hindi na raw kailangan. Pero because Semmelweis was the boss, they followed the policy and this is what happened. Oh. Oh, even though mor- yan, mortality rates dropped to near 0%. Okay? O, hindi wala nang namamatang. Wala nang okay. wala na. Because, yeah, but the weight of authority stood against Semmelweis years of research And he was relieved of his position. In other words, dinispat siya pa siya. Ano? Nakatulong na nga siya. Oh, tapos oh. pinag-resign pa siya. Exactly. Ano pa naman yan? Yeah. Kaya, alam mo, to, until today, they call this the Semmelweis reflex or effect. Oh. It's a metaphor for uh, the reflex-like tendency to reject new evidence uh, or new knowledge because it contradicts established norms, beliefs, or paradigms. Grabe, no? Grabe naman. Oh. And even if it's really going to help the mm-hmm. patients or yeah. the co- consumers, di ba? Mm-hmm. Pero today, we know so much about germs yes. and how proper hygiene and washing hands can prevent so many other illnesses. Mm-hmm. Teka, I have another story related yes. to health and wellness and how small changes can reap benefits in your life. Recently kasi, I gave a talk on health and wellness. Mm-hmm. Meron pong bagong disease na nagkakaroon ng mga tao ngayon. Ito po ang sitting disease. Ala. Diba? Sino sa inyo ang nakaupo ngayon habang nanonood sa amin? Oh, sino sa inyo nakaupo? ba? Diba? Alam mo ba that if you sit for more than six hours in one day, you are prone to developing more diseases? And do you know that one hour of sitting reduces your life for 22 minutes? It is worse than smoking one Stick of cigarette, which reduces your life for 11 minutes. Yeah. One hour of sitting reduces 22 minutes. Tapos ito pang na-discover ko. Okay, mm-hmm. sitting increases the risks of death for up to 
40%. And sitting 6 plus hours per day makes you 40% likelier to die within 15 years. <laughs> OMG, sabi ni Teresa. <laughs> I know. And even if you exercise for 30 minutes every day, you are still prone to develop to being at risk of death for up to 40%. Mm. Di ba nakakatakot? So, mm. sitting disease causes 94% higher chances of death in mm. in uh, ano ba tong nauna? Mm. In women who mm. sit 6 plus hours a day mm. compared to those who who stand more often. Mm. Tapos 48% naman sa men higher chance of death if you're sitting for 6 plus hours a day. Eh tayo, ilang oras na tayo nakaupo ngayon? Diba? Ako, oh, kanina tayo, nakatayo tayo, tayo ngayon. Ka, tayo nakatayo tayo ngayon. Ito yung naging, solution, ito yung naging solution natin so, to combat sitting disease. Pero in a regular day, how many hours do you spend in traffic sitting? Mm-hmm. Diba? One hour, two hour. And then in the office, if you work in the office, how many hours in the office? O, pag, pag drive nyo, pa-uwi, mm-hmm. ilang oras na naman yun? So pag five, no, pag six. Pag-load ng telenovela, sinasin Pagod na pagod kayo, manonood kayo ng telenovela or Korean novela, di ba? O, nakakaanin na oras kayo. Hmm. And all these lead to higher chances of death. Ano yan, di ba? So, ah, nakakatakot na merong sitting disease. It's really all about um the sedentary lifestyle. And according to this research, 20% of breast cancer complaints is because of sitting continuously. Wow. 27% of diabetes complaints is because sitting more times in a day. 30% of wow. heart disease. 25% of digestive tract cancer. Lahat ng yan dahil nakaupo tayo ng madalas in one in one day. Oh, so, so yan? how do we combat sitting disease? Eh, syempre, when we're seated, kailangan meron tayong correct posture hmm. na hanggat maari, when we're nasa uh, biglang may tumayo oh, kasi binanggit ko yung <laughs> sitting disease si si MJ biglang napatayo okay let's do webinar standing daw sabi ni Myra so ano ba yung correct posture so syempre pag nasa harap ka ng computer mo so nakikita mo dito di ba na yung mata mo dapat level siya doon sa top ng computer mo na hindi ka nakatungo ng ganon hindi ka din nakataas ng ganon para yung natural formation ng spine mo is is um, hindi lordosis or hindi naman masyadong over, di ba? Tapos yung katawan mo, kailangan square yung shoulders mo, yung shoulders mo, tsaka yung hips, tsaka yung knees, dapat naka 90 degree angle yan hanggang dun sa ankle mo. Uh, pwede as much as possible, meron kang upuan na na-adjust mo up and down para hindi ka naka naka crouch or hindi naka ano ito? Naka slouch or hindi ka uh, nag, nagka-crane ng neck mo, di ba? At iba pang mga solution in order to to stand more instead of sit more is ito, meron kang standing table o kaya meron kang adjustable table na papatong mo lang sa table mo tapos niyaangat mo kagaya nung yung naka-blue. Yung computer mo is elevated and you'll have to stand. Yeah. Tayo, naka-stand tayo ngayon. Tayo, naka-stand tayo ngayon. O kaya, di ba, pwede ka rin gumamit ng um, exercise ball as a chair, di ba? It engages your stomach even more. Yeah. So, uh, what's the solution? Apart from correct posture, getting up and getting moving every 20 minutes. So, instead of us, sabihin natin, watching K-drama for an hour or watching a webinar for an hour, why not? Pag commercial, tumayo ka. Galaw-galaw ka ng konti, di ba? Do a little bit of Zumba. Oh, yun, Gano'n katagal ba ang commercial? Five minutes? O di naka five minutes yeah, ka si na? Homer, next time na. Si Nag-stretch. Si Nag-stretch. Oh, sabi niya, stretching. Di ba? Tawa-tawa kayo dyan. Pero totoo ah, talagang makakatulong. Ayan, mag- mag-treadmill daw, sabi ni MJ. Habang oh. nang i- <laughs> Oo, pwede ka mag-stretching, pwede ka mag-stretching, pwede ka mag habang commercial time. O kaya, habang, uh, sabihin natin, merong webinar ngayon, di ba? Every 20 minutes, you can set a timer in your phone and then get up, get a glass of water or just move around a bit. It will really help. Yeah. That's just one thing. Just one do. small change and one. it will impact Longevity also of, exactly. of, of everyone. Exactly. No? Tama, sabi ni Lisel, dancing. Oh, oh, yeah. So, okay. there are so many things we can do. Hmm. Uh, exercise, move about, para lang to extend our life and not be infested by this sitting disease. Diba? Yeah. O, ano, ikaw, ano ba mga small changes na pwede natin gawin? That you can... Ayun, pagbawas um, ng soft drinks. Oh, uh, pag, uh, be, I mean, at least sa Boracay, we're more active right yes. now here. Yes. Pero, you know, all this talk about health, it reminds me of the story of a husband and wife 
Parang ang seniors who oh. went to the doctor kasi medyo malubhana ang sakit ng husband. Ay, ano yung story ang yan? Ikwento mo nga. Ay, nag-consult sila sa one of the doctors and after some extensive test, the doctor met with the wife first. Okay. Doctor said, oh. oh, do you want the good news or bad news? Siyempre, bad news muna. Yeah. Oh, ano so sabi ito? Doctor, bad news is that your husband has six to nine months to live. <gasps> And if he doesn't change anything in his lifestyle, mamatay siya. And what's the good news? Well, sabi na, the good news is that aside from taking medication na meron mm. na, if you help him do three things. I see. Number one, change his eating habits by cooking him healthy home, cook meals, avoid the bad cholesterol, salt and refined sugar, and yan, iwasan yung lagi nakaupo. Then he has a chance. Wow. Uy, nabasa ko yan sa functional medicine na, mm. that, na kung meron kang symptoms ng heart mm. disease or whatever, diabetes, if you change your diet, your symptoms can actually be mm. relieved in, in, within two weeks. Oh, Maging two healthy weeks. lang. Palitan mo lang yung lifestyle mo. Within two weeks, mawawala yung mga symptoms. Oy, okay. ang ganda niyan. Okay, okay yan. Okay. okay. Tapos sabi, oh. Oh. What's the second? <clears throat> sabi ng doctor, you need to bring him to the hospital or maybe primary care clinic, twice mm-hmm. a week, twice a week mm-hmm. for physical therapy session. Ah, pwede naman yan. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So, pangalawa, what's the third one? Eh, sabi ng doctor, based on new medical research, the third mm-hmm. thing that you need to do is to make love and have sex with your husband at least three times a week. Three times a week? Then your husband will definitely beat this illness and live much longer. Ah. So, mm. ano sabi ng wife? Hindi nagnad lang siya, tumayo, tapos numatwa siya sa waiting room. Sabi niya, pinuntahan niya asawa niya, and then the husband asked her, oh, what did the doctor say? Uh, sabi ng wife. Sabi niya, dear, sorry, but you're going to die in six to nine months. Kawawa naman yung asawa niyo. <laughs> Oy, wag naman ganun. <laughs> Joke naman yan eh. Joke naman yan, di ba? It's just to illustrate oh. about change. And, kasi mat- some, <laughs> some changes are just too much to manage for some people, di ba? Uh-huh. I'm sure you would be able to handle that pag nangyayari sa akin. Yun, yun. Ah, alam mo naman, pinakasa lang kita dahil sa katawan mo. Next! <laughs> <laughs> oh, sige, sige. Iba na ako. Oh, okay, na. Oh, good night. Oras. Okay. So, mamaya pag-usapan natin yan. But oh, okay. seriously, even in business, if your mindset is fixed, you don't like or want to do things new to adapt to the environment or future, then, mm-hmm. then if you don't do that, you'll die. Sabi nga ni Alris, isang guru, a management guru then sabi niya, adapt or die. Adapt or die. Parang like what, alam mo yung Kodak? Ay, oo, oh, Kodak! Oo, oh, yung Kodak. Kawawa oh, naman, wala na sila. <laughs> do you remember? Itong mga, itong Kodak. Naalala niyo ba? Mga, sino na nakaka-relate? Naalala niyo pa yung Kodak? Ibig sabihin, kasi tandaan niyo ko. <laughs> Ano ba? Eh, may theme song nila. Good morning. Yesterday. Napag-aala tayo mga edad natin. You wake up. Nice. And time has swept away. Yeah. O, oh, diba? Kaya yeah, na-swept away din sila. Na-bankrupt na, sila. Time so behind now. Yeah. Diba? Ayun. So, Ad campaign nila. Talagang, ano, sobrang lakas ang impact nun. Diba? Siyempre. Kodakan. Kodakan. Nag- so, nagkaroon ng selfie. Kodak talaga. Yeah, but you know, exactly, the big challenge. Alam mo, sila, ba, sila ang nag-invento ng digital camera. Oh, talaga? Yeah, but they dismiss digitization as a fad. And they were so kampante to change and go, go full blast into digital. Kaya, oh, that went bankrupt. Sayang, hindi nila kalain na oh, lahat pala ng tao. Oh, oh, oh. Ganun na magiging yeah. direct. The concept, meron akong naisip na concept ng mga Japanese dyan. Mm-hmm. Yung tinatawag nilang Kaizen. O, ano ba yung Kaizen na yan? Yes, kaizen. It's a favorite Japanese dish of mine. Oh, hindi. Sashi- uh, sashimi yun eh, di ba? Right. right. Huh? Ay, iba pala yan. Iba yun. I'm just joking. <laughs> no, seriously, kaizen is a favorite concept because yes. it's dual. Ano yan? Well, it's a Japanese term. Change for the better. Hmm. For continuous improvement. Nabanggit yan din kanina ni Ms. Pia, di ba? Na kaizen. Tingnan natin yung ano, hmm. kung paano nila sinulat in Japanese characters. Di ba? Yung first one, is kai. Mm. It means change. Mm. Tapos yung zen, yun naman ay good. Mm. So when you say kai zen, it's good change. Yeah. And it's continuing improvement, mm. continuous learning. You know, Ardi, there are many other small changes or kai zens mm. that we can make in our lives that will really help us, it, it will really help make a big impact for our future. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. It's just a change of mindset, diba? Yes. Sabi nga ni Pia kanina, yung future mindset. And most of the time, it's just simple change of mind. And that and that itself becomes a game changer. Like, 
having a growth mindset kagaya ng binanggit kanina instead of a fixed mindset. Diba? Yes. Oo, yung mga fixed mindset, yung hanggang dito na lang ako, uh, sanay na, nakakasanay ako na kasi to, di ba? As opposed to a growth mindset na willing ka to, to discover new things, to adapt to the new yeah. trends, di ba? So, yun ang growth That's mindset. That's right, natutuwa ako sa'yo. Open to learning. Natutuwa ako oh. sa'yo kasi... Recently, di ba, you've been elected as chairman of the PTA mm-hmm. uh, Federation, tamang, Parent Teacher Association here in, not just in Boracay, but the whole of Malay. Ay. So, in charge of 36 schools that yes. you're seeing as PTA chairman. And, and, and you've been hammering to them or preaching to them the concept of growth, growth mindset, mindset and purpose, diba? Yes, pur- purpose. So, uh, ang gusto ko talaga kasi, ang vision ko dito for the 16 public schools and 16 private schools dito mm-hmm. sa Malay is umaten sila to tong core work for core purpose workshop that will help them discover that God has a purpose for their lives and also it will teach them about growth mindset kasi karamihan sa mga kabataan dito mm-hmm. pag na-expose sila sa other ways of earning kunyari yan ipepedo lang nila yung mga ay yung mga paddleboard kikita mm-hmm. na sila ayun na nila pumunta sa school pag mm-hmm. hindi na sila gagraduate ayun na nila magpunta ng university so mm-hmm. importante talaga na merong growth mindset eh, na mm-hmm. na appreciate mo that when you when you expand your mind and when you grow, the better things will happen to you. So, again, growth mindset, future mindset. Let's grab that now. Galing. I'm so proud of you, babe. Parang what oh. you're doing is what Peter Drucker said. Si Peter ng magtataho? <laughs> si Peter, ah, si Peter Drucker. Yeah, the best way to predict the future is to create it, di ba? Wow. Yeah. Yes. So, ayun. So, so, yeah, let's wear our growth mindset and discuss okay. what we can do to transition towards a new beginning a new future of purpose. Okay, so as we navigate the future, how do we exact, execute yeah, change? So this is where we will land this talk mm-hmm. uh, so that we can go on in a Q&A. So mm-hmm. let's try to process what we discussed and frame them into key three key prin- principles. Okay. Yeah, G. Ano G? G, it came. Go. <laughs> Ayun pala yun, G. Oh, you learn something new every day, di ba? Oh. Oh, yeah. So sige, the first principle is this. As a leader, Change is hard for your people to accept. So, yeah, the future starts with you and those around you. So stop, look, and listen. Stop and look at the mirror. Who do you see? The man in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Parang, Parang Michael Jack. Man in the mirror. Yeah. Yun. Yeah, tama yun. Tama, di ba? Oh, yeah, yung lyrics, I'm diba? starting I'm... with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his way. No message could have been any clearer. You want to make the world better change. Take a look at yourself and make that change. Wow. Woo. Woo. Take a carry away now. <laughs> so it's all about self-leadership. As Peter Drucker said, we need to be up to the challenge by being able to lead ourselves in order to lead others. Yes. Yeah. It's about self-leadership. Yeah. So we should ask ourselves three, these questions. Number one, do we have a Kaizen mindset? Kaizen. Always looking to make small changes and improve continuously. Do we have a growth mindset and not a fixed mindset? And what else? After that, we stop and look at ourselves, we need to listen to wise counsel, the Best management and the leadership book, the Bible says, walk with the wise, become wise, associate with fools, and get or get in trouble. Pero ito din, as leaders, we also need to listen to our people. Kasi syempre, baka meron silang mga fears. Yan naman ang usually dahilan eh, kung bakit ayaw nila ng change eh. Either meron silang fears, mer- uh, meron silang comfort zone, so zone or, so kailangan talaga nila natin pakinggan, mm-hmm. empathize, Mm-hmm. And then share with them the vision of what will happen, de ba? I love that. Diba? Yun. So, kailangan lang talaga communication, empathy, teamwork. Yen talaga because teamwork that, makes the dream work. That brings us to the second principle. Are you ready? Ready. Yeah. So, Gina G. Nah. G. Go. <laughs> so, okay. principle number two is the future belongs to leaders with empathy. Ayun. Yung McKinsey report, uh, sabi doon, the future is personalization. And those who embrace it will experience success. It also mentioned five things that leaders need to have in the future. I won't ko na pero what's surprising is that in the midst of the other elements it mentioned, McKinsey said that empathy or basically leaders that love will be the key to a future that is driven by technology. Empathy, empathy love, love. love. Mm-hmm. Leaders that lead with love. It's 
tool, the yes, empathy exactly. or the ability to relate to and understand one another's emotions mm -hmm. is one of the basis for a successful future, di ba? And how does a leader do that? So yan, show empathy by pausing and being patient with the people you lead. Love by being patient and understanding. Recognize that people are in different stages of transition and change. Mm -hmm. And find out where people are specifically and help them get through the stage by journeying with them. So validate their feelings. Don't invalidate and don't just dismiss it. Mm, parang ganyan ang ginagawa ko sa mga anak ko. Mm. Nang iiyak sila, ayaw nila. Kailangan na natin umalis. Punta tayo na sa beach. Mama, no, I don't. Uh, I know you don't feel like doing it right now, but we have to. Mm -hmm. So if you have a follower, if you have someone in your in your team, you can say something like, okay, let's talk. I know you're overwhelmed and don't like the changes. Mm -hmm. Sige, talk to me. Oh, oh, what's tayo. Oh, be, oh, so what's... just be patient. Oh, okay. So nandun na tayo sa third mm -hmm. principle. Okay. Yeah. Go. Go na. Go na. So the third key is yan. Go. Go where God leads you. So so that's, for me, that's, that's the key. Stop to pray and just go. Mm -hmm. Be open-minded to growth opportunities and go when God confirms. That is a secret recipe for me because God will not lead you to a place that is harmful for you, diba? Right? That's true. And He will lead you to do the right thing. And that's the difference between managers and leaders. Managers, they get paid to do things right. But leaders lead by doing the right things. Yeah, and especially if you're at a crossroad, which reminds me of mm -hmm. a time when I was in a crossroad, diba? Right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I remember when I was discovered to join and invited to join the beauty pageant, ang crossroads ko noon, yung beauty pageant ng Binibining Pilipinas was also on the same weekend when I was supposed to go to Guam and take my physical therapy board exams. So, conflicting schedule, di ba? Mm. Pero, pangarap ko maging beauty queen. And pangarap ko din maging doctor, which is mm. why physical therapy was my pre-med course. But knowing two good things... God, who knows everything, He knows what's best for me because He loves me. He is the one that um, that I should look to. Mm. And you know what? So I prayed for it. Mm. And then when I prayed, sabi ko, Lord, ano, ano kaya? Pupunta kaya? Na, Nag-impress sa akin to look at my email. Mm. So nung tinang, tinignan ko yung email ko, mm. meron akong isang email that was randomly sent by someone I don't even know. Mm. And the subject of the email was crossroads. Sabi ko, ay, Feeling ko nga nasa crossword ako. Babasahin ko nga tong article na to. You know, when I read the bottom of the article, it said there, when you're at the crossroad, look for the cross on the road. When you find yourself at the crossroad, look for the cross on the road. Mm -hmm. So it really confirmed na kailangan talaga ipagdasal yung mga decision ko. And when I pray, God told me to go. Mm -hmm. I ended up joining the pageant. For going my board exams, pero alam mo, pinapanalo niya ako sa pageant. Tapos a week before the the coronation night, nalaman ko na na-move pala yung board exam ko to the following month. Kaya dahil sinabi ni God na go ako, pumunta ako sa beauty pageant the following month, ipinasa ko yung board exam ko. Pagbalik ko dito, tinawagan ako ng Binibining Pilipinas, sinabi niya na disqualify yung ating Miss Universe at ako na daw padadala. Eventually, I brought home the first runner-up title and you know what? When God says go, just go because He loves you. He wants what's best for you. Amen. You just have to take a leap of faith and He will be the one to open doors. He will be the one to protect you. He will be the one to allay your fears and He will be the one to give you success. Yon, nice yes. one, partner. Galing, yes. I like that. Ako, i-flex ko lang yung book ni Miriam kasi wow. nandun yung buong kwento niya. Yung, he can catch you when you fall. Mm -hmm. Available. And Shopee and Lazada. Yeah. If you want the full story. Parang pray and go if God confirms. Just like our love story, di ba? Oo nga, sinabi din ni God na ikaw mapapangasawa ko. Pero ayoko. <laughs> Kasi hindi ko siya type. Type ko misti, so. <laughs> Ay, mabasa niya rin yung love story namin sa Nandito. libro. <laughs> Pero anyways, dahil sinabi ni God na go ako. Ngayon, happy na ako, di ba? Pengi pera mo kayo. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> Ayun, malakas ka kasi kay Lord. So, God spoke to my heart and He said to Mary Ardy mm -hmm. and now I'm so happy. Wow. Yes. So nice. Ayan. Yeah, prayer really works, guys. At kasama na, pati love life doon, if you want to know how I courted Miriam also and got her to say yes. Oh, flex oh. ko naman yung libro mo. Real Men Are Poggy. Yeah. It's also available on Shopee, Amazon, mm -hmm. and Lazada. Yeah. Ayan. Okay. Oh. So, teka muna. Before, before we close. Oh. Knock, knock on it. Ay, oh, sige na nga, knock, knock. Who's there? Who's there? Nothing's gonna. Nothing's gonna who? 
Ayan na naman, no? Oh, na. Na okay. And we can build this dream together, standing strong forever. Nothing's gonna stop us now. Yes! Ayun, may sayaw! <laughs> Us. We're better together. Yeah, so Tama, it starts with you and those you surround yourself with. Number two, continue leading with empathy and love and pause, pray, and go where God leads you. Yay! Thank you. I appreciate you, babe. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. for joining thank us. You, thank you, Arden and Miriam. <laughs> thank you. A round of applause for our power couple. <laughs> Paulanin po natin ang mga hearts and emojis. <laughs> Grabe ang dami kong pinagdaanan during your talk na inspire, kinileg, napatayo. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi may 20 minutes na. <laughs> Kasi may 20 minutes na nabawa. Oh, sila sila talaga, oh. <laughs> so thank you very much for uh, sharing your time, of course, and your insight uh, with all of us. And of course, your story. I'm sure maraming mga tanong ang ating mga um, audience members na pinigilan lang nila yung mga sarili nila kanina. Pero ito na ang chance ninyo. Tanungin si RD and Miriam um, through our Q&A uh, segment. So all you have to, if you have questions, all you have to do is type them on the chat box below and we will try to address as much as we can. But let's kick it off with our first set of questions. Ito na nga. Sabi, question number one. Where do you get the courage to adapt change? I'm going to throw this question to both of you. You know, Nikki, as a believer in Christ and and um, a follower, the Bible has 365 reminders or verses. Sabi don, do not be afraid. So there's one verse of that encourages us not to be afraid for every day of the year. Right? And that's where we wow. get our strength. That's where we get our strength. Kasi kung tayo lang, maubusan tayo. That's why people burn out. Because they exactly. rely just on themselves. And we are not an infinite source of strength or power. So we need to rely on a higher power. That's God. And yes. so, sabi niya, do not be afraid. I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. At saka, alam mo, what verse, one verse that we reminds you whenever we feel worried, we feel mm -hmm. anxious, mm -hmm. we feel fearful, is this verse in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. And yeah. it says, do not be anxious for anything, mm -hmm. but in mm -hmm. everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God, mm -hmm. and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, mm -hmm. will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So, ibig sabihin, mm -hmm. we don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. See, in any situation, all we, we, all we need to do is we pray, lift it up to God, mm -hmm. give thanks that He has heard us, and mm -hmm. claim the answer to our prayers, and God Himself will give us the peace in our hearts and in our minds, so we don't have to worry, because God loves us, and He wants us to be you to experience the fullness of life here on earth. So kailangan lang talaga natin ipag-pray. Amen. Correct. Yan ang uh, talagang itaga natin sa puso natin. Hindi niyo ako tinanong pero ang ang masasabi ko diyan is God's strength is displayed most at our weakness, de ba? So yeah. parang it's the best opportunity for him to display his strength. Thank you very much for your answer for that. Ito naman specifically for Sir Ardi. Sabi niya, Sir Artie, you mentioned you've experienced so many transitions in life. How were you able to cope and what support system did you need at that time? Mm. Well, first of all, I, I mentioned already about you know relying on God's strength. Kasi by myself, hindi ko talaga masisiraan ako ng ulo. And um, secondly, surround yourself with people who love you, who encourage you. I wrote in the book, Heart of Healing, um, Create an environment around you where there is hope. You know, mm -hmm. uh, don't surround yourself with toxic people who will just yes. discourage you. You know, and then surround yourself with people who will encourage you, who will love you, and pray for you most of all. So when you surround yourself with people like that, you know, mo. The worst mm -hmm. thing that you can do is to isolate yourself when you're yeah. when you're problematic, when you're when you're experiencing trials. That's the worst thing you can do. So Nikki. Go to God and go to the people that God sends to you. Yeah. I like that. Go to God and to the people that he sends to you because he will send people your way. Mm -hmm. He will for sure. Uh -huh. All right. Our next question is for both of you. Among the new beginnings you've both had, which one is your favorite? I guess living here on the island, 
Oh, wow! Oh, yeah. Actually, and dami eh. new, new beginning with each other, mm-hmm. new beginning having children, diba? two miracle babies apart from our 14-year-old. And then, uh, yeah, moving here in Boracay. I mean, be, living a more active lifestyle, being free to explore, mm-hmm. experiencing the beauty of nature and Mm-hmm. Inhaling fresh air every day, that, that's really one of our favorites. And being on this island, which is a dream of ours. Yeah, with so, family. With, with family, family yeah. most importantly. Na homesick ba kayo at all? I'm sure there was an adjustment period. Hindi. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi kasi it's a reason for our family, relatives to come over and visit. True. Oh, oh. So, no nag chat dedication kami, we know we had 115 guests come in. It from started Manila. with 30 oh. and it blew up to 100. Kasi oh, people were so excited. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. We so also I get to go to Manila good... once once or twice a month. Oh, we so... don't That's right. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> okay, like. okay. Um, I think this is our last question. Uh, hmm. As a leader, do you base your decision for the benefit of your subordinates or your employers? Oh. Again, again. As a leader, so, what? Sorry. As a leader, do you base your decisions? Hmm. Um, are, are your decisions uh, for the benefit of your subordinates or your employers? Alin dun ang, uh, I guess, priority? Well, it's a balance also. If you take, um, sabi ni Richard Branson, if you take care of your employees, your employees will take care of your business. Of your business. Oh. So it works both ways. It's para chicken and egg theory. But guaranteed, mm-hmm. Nikki, if you take care of your staff, if you take care of your people, the people will have malasakit and take care of you and your business. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Miriam, would you like to weigh in? Um, actually, that too. Um, uh, also because... Uh, because when you take care of your people, you're also taking care of your boss's business. You like when you're considering your people, you have your your business interests in mind, you have your bosses in mind. Mm. Pero sometimes they're so high up, mm. they don't know what's happening in, in the grassroots. Mm. That's right. They don't realize that things are going slowly because people under there are having trouble understanding the new policy or the the reasons for why we need this change. And so, as a let's say, as a middle manager or as the leader in whatever position, deba, you need to consider also. Now, even as an employee or as an agent, you can actually be a leader. Meron si John Maxwell. Meron siyang libro about 360 leader, degree leadership. Mm-hmm. You don't need to have a position mm-hmm. in order to be in a position of leadership. Mm-hmm. Kasi even as an employee, you can start something that can get the people up there thinking and consider the majority. So um, um, as an employee, you can also you know initiate a conversation mm-hmm. with your mm-hmm. manager or uh, write a letter to a higher up just to get them to understand where your, the colleagues at your level uh, are coming from so that as a whole, diba, you can all work together towards the new goal. Uh, age mo, write a letter. Write a letter. Email. <laughs> the email, email. email. Communication, talaga, communication <laughs> and empathy yeah. is really key. It's really working together. Sabi si Cynthia, collaborate. Correct. Mm, collaboration. collaboration. All right, we have one one last question. Ito medyo seryoso po itong tanong na ito. How much is the per square meter price in Boracay? Mukhang nag-iisip na ho silang ano, lumipat din. Nakita nila how happy you both are there. <laughs> but no, I'm just kidding. Kasi nga pagbibili kayo dito kasi karamihan ng mga tip na mga lugar dito, tax deck lang, walang titulo. So kailangan maganap ka talaga ng lugar na may title. Nikki ano na lang, ask them, guys, you can just go to our YouTube channel. Um, um Miriam Kimbao and Ardi Roberto. Tapos we, we, you know, we have a uh, house tour. So we share. Oh, about, nice. Yeah, our house here in Boracay. And then we share also how it is to be living in Boracay. So, oh. yung mga interesado mm-hmm. dyan yun. Maroon nila kayo ng, ng vlog namin. <laughs> Amen. Thank you very much. A round of applause virtually for Ardi Roberto and Miriam Kimbao Roberto. Again, thank you so much for your time. See you in Boracay. Yay. See you.